you from your sins, folks. Jesus Christ came down to the pen penalty for your sins. The same sins you're coming out here to indulge in, you crucified Jesus, folks. You put him on a cross for your disobedience. You did that. I did that. We all did that. But God loves us. God loves us so much that he wants us to have a relationship with the Father. And this is your chance to know who, who he is. This is your chance to know who Jesus is. So don't don't waste this time arguing. Don't wait, don't waste this time in vain philosophies and fake religions. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ while, while he can still be found. Seek Jesus Christ while he can still be found. Because when you die, folks, that's it. When you're, when you're on your bed with COVID and you, the doctor says you're not going to make it, you got, he's going to be full of fear, folks. You're not right with God. Because many people think they're going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. The devil doesn't want you to think about eternity because you, your, your soul is going to live somewhere either with the Father or without the Father. But your flesh is going to die, go back to the ground where it came from. But your soul is going to live for eternity somewhere, either in hell or in heaven. And by your actions, by your lifestyle, you're determining where you want to go when you die. So when you say, I'm going to come to Sin City and live and live like this, you're pretty much saying, God, I don't want to be with you. Jesus, I don't want to be with you. You cannot love the world because the world is an empty against God. You cannot love this world more than you love Jesus Christ. This world does not love you. This world does not love you, folks. This world hates you. Everything, everything in this world hates you. That's why, that, that's why this world makes you insecure. That's why you have all these women out here who look a certain type of way on billboards, make, make women feel insecure. You got, the, you got the society. You have society promote all this money and sex and drugs. And you feel like you got to live up to those standards. All this stuff makes you feel like you're not enough. The devil says you'll never be enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not rich enough. You're not cool enough. You're not famous enough. You're not famous. The devil puts all this trash in your brain and you folks, you indulge in it. You indulge in it and you wonder why you have anxiety, you wonder why you have depression, suicidal thoughts, because you're living for Satan. You can't live for Satan's kingdom and think you're going to have a good life. Satan does not give life, Satan gives death. So why, why are you chasing death? Why are you following death? You need to follow Jesus. Jesus Christ gives life. His words give life. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come so they can have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ wants to have you, wants to give you a more abundant life. It's not about being super rich and flexing on people, but it's about having true peace, true joy, true love inside your soul. Because some people you have no rest inside your soul. That's why you're that's why you're looking for um, sex inside of marriage, you're looking for one night stands, because you have no rest in your soul. You have no rest. But Jesus Christ says, I'll give you rest. He will give you rest for your soul, but you need to humble yourself and cry out to him. You got you to put away your pride, put away your drugs, put away your narcissism, and let Jesus Christ come inside your heart and change you for the better. Because Jesus Christ will clean you up, folks. You cannot clean yourself up. Because you think you, if you think you're going to clean yourself up with alcohol, you're deceiving yourself. If you think you're going to just, or you're going to fix your trauma, your childhood trauma with drugs and partying, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You cannot fool no one. You're not fooling no one. You're just fooling yourself. You're hurting yourself. Stop running away. Don't run away from God. Let God heal you. Let God take away your pain. You got to repent from your sins and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. Because repentance is a gift, folks. Repentance is a gift. It's not going to last forever. When you die, you cannot repent. When you die, there's no more, there's no more, I'm sorry, God, my bad. There's none of that stuff no more. Repentance is here for people on earth. There are people praying in hell right now, but no one answers. There are people asking God, God, give me one more chance, God. I'm sorry, God. You're real. Dang, this is hot. The, the God is not answering your prayers. Because it's God, the Bible says it's appointed one man, it's appointed man one time to die in his judgment. So after you die, folks, there's judgment. There's immediate judgment for your life. There's immediate judgment for your life. And God is actually judging you, folks, by the way you live your life. And most folks, you're storing up wrath for yourself. You don't even know it. You're, you're storing up wrath. That means there's wrath over your head, folks. So the wrath of God is over your head. The Bible says God is angry at the wicked every day. God is God hates wickedness, folks. He's just patient. He is slow to anger because God desires you to repent from your sins. God wants you to repent from your wicked ways and have eternal life. But if you're not repenting from your sins, you're not living for God, you're, at, you're adding up sin to your life, folks. That's a lot of sin you add up in 80 years and without Jesus Christ. 
And if you die out Jesus Christ, folks, it's not going to be no rest in peace. It's going to be an entrance to torment. You're going to dwell in torments because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. You know why we die? Because of sin. Because of sin. But it was not supposed to be like this. It was not supposed to be like this. And it won't be like this forever. Because Jesus Christ will come back with his angels. He will come back with, with his holy ones. And he's going he's gonna to get rid of the ungodly. Jesus Christ will get rid of all the ungodly. The meek will inherit the earth. And you want to be part of that group. You want to be part of the meek that inherits the earth. Because we will reign with Jesus Christ on the, on the, on, on, in the millennium kingdom. We will reign with Jesus Christ. It's going to be full of peace. There's going to be no animals going to be eating each other. It's going to be beautiful, folks, because Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. He is called the Prince of Peace. But is, is there any peace in this world at the moment? Not much. You know why? Because Jesus Christ has not come back yet. But he will come back, and he will bring peace to the earth. But before he brings peace to the earth, he's going to destroy the wicked. He's going to destroy the ungodly. Because Satan right now is trying to brainwash the world to try to war against God. And that's what's going on in America. You're trying to war against God, folks. And Satan wants you to be destroyed with him. Satan knows you can't war against God to win. That's why he's down here in the first place, because he lost. Now he's trying to brainwash you to war against God with technology and all this science stuff. Your folks, you don't understand. Satan is trying to prepare you for destruction, folks. He's trying to prepare you for utter destruction. Because the Bible says God's going to gather all the nations. He's going to gather all the nations. And God's going to destroy them with, the, with his breath. God's going to destroy all everyone going against him with his breath, folks. That's how easy it's going to be. And you folks, you want to war against God. You think technology and science is, is better than God? Folks, you understand God created science and technology. God created all this stuff. There's technology in heaven. There's technology in heaven. All this stuff you have comes from heaven. God is eternal, folks. So don't be brainwashed by society trying to war against God. Because Satan just wants you to go to hell with him. Because he's already going to hell. He just want to add, he just want to add on. To his um his his list so you need to follow the lord jesus christ follow the lord jesus christ and repent from your sins and do not be deceived do not be deceived the bible says uh, uh, do not be deceived that god is not mocked for one of man's souls he shall reap so folks you, you're going to reap what you sow in this world so what are you sowing right now if you're sowing in alcohol and lust and fornication and adultery you're gonna reap a lot of this you reap a lot of horrible things in the afterlife if you don't repent. I'm not trying to condemn anyone to hell, but I'm trying to warn my neighbors because I love my neighbors, folks. This is how you you love your neighbor. You tell your neighbors that they're on the wrong path. And late neighbors, I love you. I'm saying you're on the wrong path. This is not the path for your life. This is not the this is not the right path. You don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't gotta be screaming at me. You don't have to be a porn watcher. You just get right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Just repent from your sins and follow Jesus. That's what you need to do. You don't need Las Vegas Strip. You don't need clubs. You, you don't need it. You don't need it. What you need is the love of God inside your heart. That's all, that's all you need. But the devil, the devil is trying to keep you away from God. And the devil is doing all he can. The devil is doing all he can to keep your mind occupied in nonsense. And Hulu, and Netflix, and Pornhub clubbing you do all this stuff all, all your all your life and you doubt out jesus christ and these demons they're excited for you to go to hell they're like finally chelsea's here i wanted her for so long it's, it's horrible folks it's horrible all these demons these alcohol demons these sexual perverted demons the, the, you're serving these folks sometimes you don't even want to get drunk you don't want to watch porn but people you feel like you feel like there's just an urge you feel like something's making you do it it's spirits folks so you can't you can't see a spirit but a spirit needs a body to go in. It's these spirits go inside your body. That's why you can't control yourself when you get drunk because those spirits are taking over. Those spirits use your body. They hijack your mind, your thoughts. And that's why you have all these thoughts. You want to kill yourself? You're like, I don't want to kill myself. Why have these thoughts? Because you have a spirit of suicide in your, in your mind. It can, be, it can be casted out in the name of Jesus. But when you open your body up to the demonic foes, these, demon, these demons are trying to destroy you every day. They're trying to get rid of you. Because God does not want you to kill yourself. God created you to live for him, to live forever. So these demonic thoughts, these suicide thoughts, that's the devil. So you need to rebuke that in Jesus' name. That's why you use the word of God. Because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two a sword. And sadly, most of the church will not tell you this. Because most of the church is like ran by Freemasons and pimps and all types of wolves and sheep's clothing. 
But folks, you understand, Jesus Christ still has his hand out for you. Jesus Christ still says, my lost son and daughter, I still care about you. I still know your pain. I know your trauma. And I want to take you out. Jesus Christ wants to take you out from your pain. But you have to repent. You have to come to him. You have to seek his face. You have to go to him. Jesus Christ has his arms wide open. But folks, you're, you're dodging Jesus. You're, you're, you're dodging Jesus Christ. Stop dodging him and just run to his arms. Let Jesus Christ heal you. Let, let Jesus Christ comfort you. And he will comfort you. Jesus Christ, his love is better than any human love, folks. Jesus Christ loves you more than your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your spouse, your dog. He loves you more than all those people, all those things. And when you have the love of God living inside you, you will understand what I'm talking about. When you have the love of God living inside you, you will know how to truly love people, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because God is love. God is love, folks. He is love. And to have this love, you have to know who God is. If you don't know who God is, you'll never know what true love is. You'll never know what true love is. This generation thinks you know, you know what love is. You don't know what love is, folks. You know what lust is. You know what sex is and cuddle buddies and holding hands. But you don't know what true love is. This is why people hop in and out of relationships. Because you don't want true love. True love is sacrifice. True love is commitment. It's faithfulness. But this generation... You use people for comfort, you know? You're lonely, so you just want a girlfriend to talk to. That's not what love's about. That's not love's about. Just because you're lonely, you want somebody to hold your hand, you want somebody to cuddle. That's not what love's about. Love is commitment, love is faithfulness. Jesus Christ is faithful. God loved us when we did not love him. Jesus Christ shed his blood for his enemies. That, that's what true love's about, forgiving people. But some folks, you have unforgiveness in your heart. You still, you still hate your ex from like 10 years ago. You have bitterness towards all these people. That's evil, folks. That's evil. You cannot go to heaven with unforgiveness in your heart. Jesus, God says, if you don't forgive others, he will not forgive you. How can God forgive you if you don't forgive someone else 10 years ago? You need to let that go. You need to forgive and love people. Because Jesus Christ forgave us. He died on the cross for your sins. For you. Because he loves you. So this is why you gotta walk in forgiveness. You gotta walk in love. You, you, gotta, you gotta walk in peace. And if, it, if it's hard now, we understand. But Jesus Christ can help you, folks. God is a spirit. God is a spirit, and God's spirit will help you in His journey. The Holy Spirit will help you in His journey. You don't have to do this life alone, folks. You do this. You feel like you're alone because you're dis you're disconnected from God. You don't have to be alone in this world. God is with us. That's why his name is Emmanuel. It means God is with us. He is actually with us. If you choose to, if you choose to seek him, you, you can see he's actually with you. But if you ignore God, you feel like you're by yourself. You feel like life is just lonely. It, it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. You have a choice to know your creator or to reject him. It, it, it's your choice. But there's consequences for your choice. There's, all, there's always consequences in this life. And God is patient. He's slow to anger. But there's a, there's a day coming for judgment. There's a day coming to judge to judge the world, folks. So you gotta make sure you gotta you gotta make sure you're on the right side with God because God is separating the, the sheep from the goats. He is separating the sheep from the goats. You don't want to be a goat. You do not want to be a goat. You don't want to be rebellious. You you do not want to be uh, a God hater because the goats will be cursed to everlasting fire. So you want to be a sheep. Jesus Christ says. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So what voices are you listening to? Are you listening to the voices of fear? Are you listening to the voices of sexual immorality? Voices saying, hey bro, go smack that girl's butt. Hey bro, go 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 talk to that girl. What, what voices are you listening to, folks? Are you listening to the voice of God? Because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So you gotta listen to the right voices in his life. Because there's a lot of demonic voices. There's a lot of evil voices. A lot of demons talking in your ear, saying, go kill yourself, kill yourself, you, you don't matter, kill yourself. That's the wrong voice. That's the wrong voice. You need to listen to the voice of God. You need to cry out to Jesus Christ. You need to get in the word of God and know God's voice and stop listening to any little voice you hear. Because every thought is not your thought, folks. Every thought is not your thought. It, because it's in your head, it's not me, it comes from you. Because God can speak to you, and also the demons can speak to your mind too. So you need to know how to warfare. You need to know the word of God. You know, you know, you need to know how to rebuke the devil out your life. Because if you don't rebuke the devil, the devil's not going nowhere. 
The Bible says, submit to God, uh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So if you don't submit to God, if you don't resist the devil, the devil's gonna be, he's going to be all in you, in your life. He's going to be all in your head, all in your finances, all in your body. He's going he's gonna to wreck you until you become crazy, you become depressed, you become uh, have anxiety because you have not rebuked him out your, out your life because you have not submitted to God. You're still living for his kingdom and he has legal rights over you until you come out of his kingdom. But Jesus Christ is going to destroy Satan's kingdom. He's going to destroy this wicked world. He's going to establish his kingdom here on this planet. And you want to reign with him. You, you want to reign with Jesus. You don't want to miss out on the goodness of God when he comes back. But many people sadly are going to miss out because they're too indulged in this sinful life. They're too indulged in, in, the, in the world. You cannot love the world and love the Father because this world is evil. The only thing in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So let me explain that to you. So the lust of the flesh, you know, all the sexual immorality, the half-naked guys, half-naked girls, the lust of the eyes, um, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, eyes, people lusting at the things they want, you know, all this covetousness stuff, and the pride of life. People are very prideful. So this stuff does not come from the Father. It, co it's, it, it comes from the world. So this world does not represent God. It represents Satan's kingdom. Because God is not for murder. God is not for drunkenness. God is not for wars. This does not represent God's kingdom. This, this life, this world, this fallen world represents Satan's kingdom, folks. So people say, man, where's God at? There's so much evil. There's so many diseases. There's so many wars. This, this is Satan's kingdom, folks. This is Satan's kingdom. And you folks, you, you're, you're cheering for Satan's kingdom. You're indulging Satan's kingdom. You're saying, let's go to Sin City. Yeah, you're indulging in Satan's kingdom. You complain about the world, but you're still indulging the same simple activities of the world. That's hypocrisy. That is hypocrisy, folks. You get mad when people die, but you celebrate Dev holidays. You celebrate Halloween. You hate when serial killers chop off people's heads, but on Halloween you have a chopped up head in your, in your doorstep. That, that doesn't make any sense, folks. Does it make any sense? Why do we celebrate death? Well, why do we cheer for death on, on, on a day, but every day, every other day, we want to act like death is bad? You listen to death music. You listen to music that talks about killing people, shooting up strip clubs. But when your friend gets shot, you want people to mourn for you on Facebook. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. You're, this generation, you're double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, folks, meaning you are confused about life. You don't know either you like life or like death. You don't know which one you want. One day you like life, one like one day you like death. You're just you're teeter tottering. You don't know who you are. This generation, you have an identity problem. You don't you have an identity problem. That's why you try to find your identity in the wrong idols, like Lil Uzi Bird and all these emo chat rappers, because they identify with you, folks. Because you're sad and they're sad. They hate life and you hate life. So you're like, that's my idol, because you identify with them. You don't know who you really are in life. You, your identity needs to be in Christ. Your identity needs to be in Jesus Christ and not in emo trap rappers. And not, not, not in YouTubers, not in Twitch streamers. You, you need to find out who you are. And you can do that only with the Lord Jesus Christ because God has a will for you. God has a destiny for you. Because most people, you're, when you're bumping music, you don't live to. You don't shoot up clubs, all right? You don't you don't carry a Uzi on you. So why are you bumping this stuff? Because it has a cool beat, bro. It has a cool beat. It's cool to kill people because it has a cool beat. That's what we're doing now, folks. Because things have a cool beat, it's okay. It's okay to promote it. That's evilness, folks. That's evil. That's evil. That's not how God looks at things. God's not going to say, hey, just come to heaven because even though you're a murderer, you, you have a cool beat to your songs. So just come up here in heaven. That's not how God's going to judge people. That's not how God judges people. God judges people righteously, fairly. So many folks, when your favorite a gangster rapper die, you say, R.I.P., bro, R.I.P., R.I.P., really? He killed how many people? He sold drugs to who? And he's in heaven because you like his music? That's not how that works. That's not how, that's not how God's getting down, folks. You, you, you gotta come, you gotta have logic. You gotta have logic. And this generation, you promote a lot of wicked people. You promote a lot of wicked people. And when these wicked people die, you want to cry and mourn. You want to cry and mourn when these wicked people die. I'm not trying to say dying is good for anyone, but I'm just saying, folks, you, you promote a lot of wickedness. You, you promote a lot of wickedness, and it shows what's in your heart. It shows what's in your heart. And Jesus says, at the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
So all this stuff, all the blasphemy, all the all the um, murder, all this stuff comes from your heart. This is why Jesus Christ is knocking at your heart and he wants to clean your heart. We need to ask God to give us a pure heart because without a pure heart, we cannot do the will of God. Jesus Christ came to change your mind and your heart. It's, it's, it's not about religion. It's not about going to church and just checking off a box. That's not what living for Jesus Christ is about. That's religion, that's tradition. All that, that stuff does not get you close with God. But Jesus Christ wants you to come, Jesus Christ wants your heart. Because folks, without, without, without having your heart changing, you're not gonna do anything for God. You're not gonna really know who God is if you don't actually um, be vulnerable. You gotta be vulnerable. You have, you have to change, folks. And this is why people don't like God, because they don't want to change. They want to do things my way. It's like, I want. it's my life. I want to do what I want. It's really childish. It's, it's, it's very, very childish and immature. Because you think, you're pretty much saying, even though you live in God's world, you know more than God. That's what you're saying when you say, I want to do it my way. Even though there's Satan deceiving you, you think you're doing it your way. You're not doing it your way. You're just doing it Satan's way. You're doing what Satan tells you to do. When Satan says, go beat up your wife, you go beat up your wife. When Satan says, go watch porn, you go watch porn. You're not doing what you want. You're not free. You're in bondage to sin. When you live in sin, you are a slave to sin. And it's sad. That's why Sin City makes so much money, because it, it just appeals to your flesh, your fallen state. It's, so, it's very, very wicked. Because men in their fallen state, a lot of what they want is just sex, drugs, 